ready? Come on. Time for the picture. You'll be good on the on the second. Yeah, that one or the next one. We'll try that one. And on this end with the blue shirt, that'll look good. Okay, what else have we got here? One, two, three, four, five. Good. Very good. Very nice. Thank you. Reverend Carter, you're not ready. Look at this nice looking group of kids. <laughs> Reverend Carter, where are your robe and your stole? Yeah, about that, Mrs. Simone. I was thinking maybe this year we can lighten up a little bit, you know? Lose the ties. But, but every photo, every year we I have. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, this year, no ties. Take them off, guys. Let's just breathe a little bit, huh? Uh, just drop it on the ground in front of you. It'll be fine. Okay, guys. Three, two, one. Here now our scripture for today. We pick up in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, a bit of overlap from last week and moving forward. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servant through whom? You came to believe, as the Lord assigned each, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose. And each receives wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants and working together, you are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose how to care, how to build on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid that foundation is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on a foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, the work of each builder will become visible in the day it will disclose it because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each has done. But what is built on the foundation survives. The builder will receive a reward. If the work is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only through the fire. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's continue in prayer. Gracious God, guide us as we engage your word. Illuminate in us what it is you would have us to see. Help us to know deeper what it means to look at, hear, and connect with our common purpose. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this video that we just watched, along with 35 others, are part of an, a subscription to something called Enlightened Films. It was produced by a member of Davidson College Presbyterian Church, which is right up the road, and it was given to us by the Presbyterian community of churches to which we belong. I'm excited to use these throughout the next few years to help point us towards truth that we can wrestle with together. This subscription is not cheap, so I love that the Presbytery is paying for it. Some of us first saw this about four weeks ago at the Elder Symposium, right? I was thinking about how to start this third series, section of the series that we're on, as we look in the month of February around this particular passage and how it informs what we can understand of belonging together. 
Belonging in this video came to mind because there is a certain anxiety that I think we all could relate to with that young man. Questions of do you really fit in? Do you have what it takes to be a part of this community? Anybody ever had that feeling? Yeah. It also supports to the kind of hope and power and love there is in feeling like you belong. And it points to questions that we must continue to wrestle with as the church in these days of what it means to be a space where everyone belongs, where the questions of are you enough, are you doing enough, do you have enough, are you well-dressed enough, can you afford that tie enough, whether or not we recognize it still creeps in. Even in a church where we work hard to be a church where everyone can feel invited. We have to first be honest that we've all had those feelings. Some of us come to acknowledge it, particularly in our teen years and adolescence, when we first really start to struggle with how to navigate, how am I going to present myself in the world so I can know where I belong in this world. But indeed, it doesn't stop when you're an adolescent. At least it didn't for me. I'm guessing not for you either. We can run into these moments no matter where we find ourselves. Some of us experience this more often than others. Those of us who live in the margins of society outside of what is normal or expected. Those of us who are unemployed or underemployed. Those of us who are not white, those of us who do not have the same physical abilities that are expected to be normal. Those of us who are above or below the expected BMI. Those of us whose brains and bodies are atypical, recovering from traumatic and dramatic scars, some that we can see and some that we can't. Some of us who are moving through life feeling like we aren't quite sure if we belong here. All of these realities can leave us wondering if we have a place. And my honest prayer is that this church and every church will be the place where people can come with those exact fears and know that they belong. That feeling of belonging and longing for the version of ourselves where we have the tie that can go clearly underneath our collar where we don't have to question if people are looking at us as the different one. Well, I actually think life begins when we recognize that all of us are without our ties. All of us are without expected parts of ourselves that could make us feel different. And that we all have times in which we can be like that pastor where we can recognize that we have not only the tie, but we've got the stole and the robe and every other piece of information, and we have to take it off. There is a longing in humanity as people created by the divine to be connected to each other. A longing for shalom, which is universal wholeness and connectivity. This longing to belong when experienced in authentic and honest community where it touches in to this deep desire to be connected with the God who sends us to be connected to each other. We are genuinely more than our parts. Amen? Paul states this later in the same letter to this ecclesia as a reminder for those who were here the first week or who might have missed church that week. The ecclesia is the church, those called or gathered together, more particularly those who are gathered and sent out. So in this ecclesia that is the church in Corinth, later in chapter 12, he says, For just as the body is one, and there are many members, all of the members are one body. Though many, they are one body. So it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all who are made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of only one member, but of many. 
This is good news. Amen? It is remarkable that humanity, despite all of these millennia of getting told that same story, continues to struggle with its interconnectedness. At least that's what I'm seeing these days. Anybody else notice that we are struggling to see that we are actually all in this together? We often, for the sake of power and ego and control, or even just fears that we don't even have words for, want to be the ones who are on top of the heap. We want to be in first place. We want to know where the hierarchies are so we can go for the power players. We want to be the people who knows that that jersey of that team is going to win this game. But at the very same time, deep down in the base of our bellies, we know that's just not true. That these things won't satisfy us and they won't save us because we are actually one body. We can't ignore the suffering of the other because to do so is to ignore your own suffering. We belong together. A huge part of being the body is this beautiful coordination of distinct members towards a common purpose for the flourishing of its whole. As much as powers and principalities would have us believe that there is a scarcity and there just isn't enough for everyone, this is a lie. There is enough goodness in this world to go around. Amen? Some of the members of the body, it would have you believe through powers and principalities, are just innately more important or more special than others. This, too, is just a lie. Those of us who are called to be faithful followers of Christ, faithful followers of God, well, it's mesmerizing if you think of the fact that even God chose to come in community. Three and one and one and three, creator and liberator and sustainer, and all of them capable of doing all of those jobs. It is remarkable that there could have just been one before the gift of us to see what it's like. You see community at the very top of what it is to be divine. A body in perfect common purpose. Instead of, instead of having these hierarchies, these tensions, these ways of being that are not collaborative, we are invited through this scripture to break open the word of God to see that even in the early church there were challenges, but the call was to use their gifts together. The people expected a tiff between Paul and Apollos and Peter and just plain Jesus. But Paul says, no, I won't get into that fight the way you want me to. He points instead to a collaborative way of seeing each other. As we continue from last week's passage, we are offered a similar blessing in the words of Paul that can impact us and how we see ourselves as Meadow Lake Church as well. As we find ourselves in this current setting, in a unique place in the world that we've never been in before, for this day that we experience, we've never had a rehearsal before. Amen? Everything is new. The interconnectedness that Paul points to is also available for us in ways that we have yet not imagined. The apostle speaking to this point writes, what then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants that were able to do what God told them to do. For indeed, Paul believed he was called to plant, but it was Apollos who offered water. And God knows seeds in the ground without water will not flourish. But water on the ground without the seed will not bear fruit either. We need each other. And the only way that happens is through the growth of God. Neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. But I love these words. Only God gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose. Can you guys say that? Common purpose. And each will receive. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common 
purpose. Paul's agricultural gardening analogy, well, it quickly turns to an architectural building analogy. Paul does that. If you've ever read any of his letters, he will jump and mix analogies all the time. So he'll go with talking from the body, then he'll talk about plants, then he'll talk about building buildings. It's all throughout this chapter. But they're all towards this sense of what growing means. Amen? And I believe, and I've heard from you all, that we believe Meadow Lake is called to grow in these days. Well, what will that growth look like? A key element of belonging and having a space where folks can grow in their faith is understanding and articulating our common purpose. These are our actual longings that we only know if we actually say them out loud. So I'm going to give us a chance to do that. What are some of our longings for our church body? What are the things that we would hope would happen in this place as you imagine the kind of community that Metal Lake is and is called to be in the future? Can you all share with me some of those things that are our longings as a church? Growth. So tell me more. What is growth? What do you imagine growth looking like? I need, a, I need a friend. Can, I, can, can someone help me? So I, I would like to be able to be present with folks. Is there anyone who's willing to catch some of these beautiful pieces of information? Do you, is everyone okay with sharing? So that, because I, I want us to know that this is what our common sense of purpose is. So thank you. Any other sense of what we imagine, what we feel like we're longing for? Diversity. Diversity. Youth. Youth. Children! The choir says children, and I mean the choir of who we are. Amen. So little voices, little spirits that can teach us and be taught by us, and we can grow together. What else? Are... Say it again. Alive throughout the week. So it's not a Sunday stop in, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so getting clarity about what is that common purpose, what's essential, and being able to have some diversity of how that looks like outside of what's core. Did I get that right? Did I catch it? Yeah. What are some of the other things that we are longing for as a community? Because we don't know until we share them. Putting our faith in action. Any other senses? Any other longings? When you pull up to this building on a Sunday or Tuesday or whatever day. Yes, Chris? So, yeah. So, going, maybe sharing that feeling of family with folks who don't know it yet. Yeah? That feeling of connectedness. That love and connection between each other. There's a longing for that to be at the center of who we are. Is that right? Yes. Um. Yeah, so continuing to have more ways of connecting and communicating with each other. Yeah, so attending to those who are physically not able to be here but are a part of our community. Did I get that right? Okay. Were you saying something similar? Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. 
So sharing the longing of connectedness, both as to those who can physically be here and not physically be here, and those who are a part of this community, whether or not they ever step in the door again, if they've been a part, or ever step in the door. So getting that feeling that we are cultivating here through Christ out to others is what I'm hearing too. Staying in touch with folks. It sounds like we want a place of belonging. (laughs) That this is truly, truly, truly available with and for each other. That we can live life together through Christ. First of all, session members, you heard that because it'll come up in our next meeting. This is uh, a gift to know. I received a a, a lovely stack of um, surveys. And surveys are great because they give me some basic information for which, for those who weren't here that first Sunday, we now have communion bread that is both gluten-free and dairy-free so that everybody can partake of it. I wouldn't have been able to make that change on the first day of church if I didn't have that survey. But there are things in this conversation that I never could get from a survey. Amen. And there are ways in which us slowing down and making space to hear each other's voices that changes how we understand how to move forward together. I thank you for those who were able to share. And I thank you for those who were able to listen. Because in doing so, we are being the body of Christ. For indeed, when I walked out, My legs had to be coordinated. My eyes had to be coordinated. I did not need my eyes to step. They needed not to get out on the ground and put itself onto the floor. It would have been freaky and weird. (laughs) But I needed my feet to step, and I needed my eyes to see you all so that I could hear you. We have to be okay with that diversity of skills and gifts. We have to be okay with making space for each other. This is our common call and purpose for indeed as long as christ is our foundation the what we do is important but the how we do it is just as important amen there's an african proverb that i want to close out with i actually shared this with jen earlier this week for which we are very blessed to have her so i just want to give god thanks um And it goes like this. If you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go with others. We are a community, and I think we're called to go far with each other, which means we may slow down, and you may not get things quite as quickly as you would want to. But if the idea is that we're putting the story of who we are in the middle, I think God's going to trust us to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever hope and or dream because our common purpose lies in that foundation that all may know the abundant life possible with Christ. And I am so grateful that we're having this opportunity to be that together. And all God's people said, amen. Amen.